Alice Walker's award-winning book, Color Purple, has been controversial since it was first published in 1982, a book that was recently adapted into a major motion picture for the second time. There's a little bit of dissonance between the production of these adaptations and the themes in this book. At its core, The Color Purple is about powerful Black women who overcome their circumstance and forge a path for themselves in this world. But in both adaptations, Alice Walker's work has been minimized in order to essentially make a profit. And it's really hard for me to look at that and not see that as a continuation of the pattern of how Black women's work is often disregarded and disrespected. In fact, one of the controversies related to the new adaptation of The Color Purple has to do with the compensation of the Black women standing in front of the camera. Now, I was first made aware of potential tensions between Oprah and Taraj P. Henson when I saw this video in my feed. A lot of people were analyzing this video and sensing some sort of strife between Oprah and Taraj P. Henson. Henson has spoken very openly about not being properly compensated for the role she plays. And Oprah has been called out for not properly compensating the women who work on some of her projects. Henson started speaking about not being properly compensated for her roles after she was nominated for an Oscar for her role in The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Apparently she was only paid about $100,000 for that role. And after taxes, that really looks more like $50,000. Henson initially wanted to be paid $500,000 for the role, a rate that is very common amongst actresses of the same caliber. But at the time, she unfortunately didn't have enough pull to negotiate her rate. Henson would not be compensated to that degree until Tyler Perry did so for her role in I Can Do Bad All By Myself. I know that talking about these numbers, a lot of people hear them and they think, oh my gosh, that is so much money. But for Henson, it's not really about the money, it's more about the respect. And it's namely about the fact that she's not getting paid as well as white actresses are getting paid. In an interview with Gail King, she said, I'm only human and it seems like every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again. Like I never did what I just did. And I'm just tired. It wears on you, you know? So I read the book for the first time in preparation for these videos. And when I was reading about Suge Avery, Taraj P. Henson was just such a perfect person for that role. And apparently Blitz Bazawule also really, really liked Taraj B. Henson for Suge Avery, but she was still forced to audition and go through the process like everyone else. And once she got the role, she was disappointed to find that yet again, she was going to be underpaid for her work. Keep in mind that the budget for this new adaptation was massive. This film had a hundred million dollar budget, which is really steep in comparison to the first adaptation's 15 million. And Henson found herself asking where exactly the money was going. I mean, there were situations where she had to drive herself to and from set and she wasn't given her own dress room for a lot of her scenes. And of course, when people started to hear about this, a lot of people started looking at Oprah who has previously been accused of underpaying actresses. Like I said, Oprah's changed quite a bit since she's played Sophia, and she looked at The Color Purple as such an important, life-changing experience for her. Oprah became a producer on the newest adaptation because she was really, really passionate about her experience acting in the first one. And it's very clear when you look into Oprah's feelings about being in the first film that she saw it as a very large moment of change for her. It was something that changed her life forever, for the better. Her show became incredibly successful and she quickly went from local to national. And when she asked her management for a raise for her all-woman team, her management responded to her by saying, why do you need a raise? You're just a bunch of girls. 
So Oprah decided to go out of her own pocket and give her team a raise. And eventually she would leverage that so that the management would actually give them the bonus. However, since then, it seems like Oprah has had a really spotty history with compensation, especially when it comes to compensation for Black actresses working in some of her projects. Most notably, Monique, who would openly speak not just about her experience with being undercompensated by Oprah, but also by Tyler Perry. The new adaptation was indeed impacted by a lot of the recent strikes that we've seen in Hollywood, and Oprah would turn to The Hollywood Reporter and say, One of the reasons why I was praying, praying, praying that the strike would be over is because I so wanted this experience, the experience that I had with the color purple in my life, to be shared by all of these women. I thought, if the strike doesn't end, they will never get to have that ride. And there's nothing like that ride. There's nothing like being out in the world, being able to talk about it and share the beautiful energy of everything that Alice wanted when she wrote that story. And listening to that, you can kind of piece together that Oprah is a little out of touch. She is like a lot of rich people where she's been rich for so long that she doesn't really have a lot of personal understanding about how hard it is right now for actors today. The world is pretty different from the 80s. There are a lot of things that have changed. The cost of living is a lot higher than it used to be. And it's pretty clear that Oprah doesn't quite understand that a lot of things have changed about Hollywood. People were on strike because they wanted better pay. And Oprah's comments were obviously not very well received because she has a track record of underpaying people. And again, because of Oprah's history and Taraj P. Henson's previous comments, there were a lot of people who were piecing things together and saying that the two women had issues with each other. And that sort of extended to the idea that she might be potentially mistreating other members of the cast. But Danielle Brooks would actually come forward and make a statement saying that some jobs are about artistic fulfillment and the legacy that we talk about for years. And that is what The Color Purple has been for me. I knew that what could come from this, no amount of money could ever pay. It's priceless. And you know, I feel like a lot of Black creatives often struggle with this idea of being thankful that you're even in the room. It's certainly a, a feeling that I've dealt with where I've sort of looked at companies who aren't particularly treating me very well and I have to measure, should I complain or should I just be thankful for the opportunity? And frankly, my experience has been that, yeah, sometimes you do get a lot out of working on something and not getting paid very much for it. But for a lot of people, that's not sustainable. I mean, one of the biggest reasons why I never got very far in the animation industry is because I refused to work for basically no pay. There was just such this idea of let me exploit your free labor for as long as possible so that I can get a lot from you before maybe getting you a job. There's a job on the horizon if you just do this work for free. And I'm kind of thankful that I never really did that, though I will say there are definitely times, and I'm kind of in a phase like this right now, where I wish I could have jumped into some maybe not high paid, but very exciting job opportunities. And like I said, I'm kind of open to doing that more so now. I also think an interesting point to bring up when we talk about compensation for the films is that Steven Spielberg actually decided, kind of because he was a white man, if we're being honest, that he would not make more than the guild minimum working on the film because he wanted to stay within the $15 million budget, right? So there sort of is this general spirit around the color purple of that, of people accepting less pay because the story is so important. But all that aside, Taraj P. Henson would actually come out and clarify that she has no issues with Oprah, saying, Miss Oprah has been nothing less than a steady and solid beacon of light to all of the cast of the color purple. She has provided encouragement, guidance, and unwavering support to us all. She told me personally to reach out to her for anything I needed, and I did. It took one call, one conversation, and one decision-making Black woman to make me feel 
heard. And you know, when Taraj P. Henson made this post, there definitely were people who were like, oh, did Oprah force you to make this post? But personally, as a fan of seeing things in undulating shades of gray and not necessarily black and white, I think that two things can be true at once. I think that Oprah can be a very supportive person and also simultaneously, Taraj P. Henson can still be getting paid less than she deserves. And I also think it's important to point out that Oprah is, at the end of the day, just a producer. She's not actually in charge of Taraj P. Henson's paycheck. Ultimately, this film performed pretty decently. It actually broke a record for one of the highest earning Christmas debuts, and it earned $18 million its first week. However, it would start to plummet the following week, and some people are saying for that reason that the newest adaptation is a flop. But contrary to what a lot of people were saying about not needing this new adaptation, the newest adaptation is actually more highly rated on Rotten Tomatoes than the first adaptation. And to be honest, most of the people that I've spoken to who have seen the film, most of the Black people that I've spoken to who have seen the film, seem to really like it. And Alice Walker was very happy with the fact that Suge and Celie's relationship is far more explicit in the new adaptation, saying, I really love it that audiences have to take away the reality that Suge and Celie became lovers, because I think that we really needed help there. We really needed to see that love is love, you know, that people love whoever they love, and it is their right to do that. And if she likes it, I love it. Ultimately, I think The Color Purple is a very fascinating story that absolutely deserves its recognition as an American classic. I find it fascinating that this book is so widely celebrated yet fundamentally misunderstood by people who claim to enjoy it. Alice Walker pulled from her own experiences as a bisexual woman to write this story. And again, I think that it is so insidious that so many people like the story, like the characters, like so much about the story, The Color Purple, but don't like that Celie is a lesbian. That is fascinating to me. And for me, it is again, yet another piece of evidence of how much people appreciate the work that Black queer people create the way that we add to the culture, but they don't love us enough to actually be in community with us. And there is this subtle idea that clearly telling the stories of LGBT people is just not financially viable unless we completely erase the sexuality of the character. Black queer women deserve to be the main characters in their stories. They deserve to have that aspect of them centered when it matters. I think a lot of Black queer people deal with this sort of desire to compartmentalize. You feel this feeling that you can't share community with other Black people unless you hide or downplay your queerness. And to me, the way that people love this story, but don't love that it's by a queer person, about a queer person, is just another example of the way that people appreciate the, the creativity, the labor, the things that Black queer people create, but are still incredibly resistant to being in community with them. On the video I made on my main channel about the silly influencer who did an ad for The Color Purple, I talk about how, for me personally, while I understand why a lot of these things were toned down, I also feel that the story should be told in the unflinching way that they're told in this book, because for a lot of people, that's what allows them to change, right? Because again, the reason this book resonated with so many Black women is that it spoke about tough subjects like domestic violence, sexual violence, miscarriages, subjects that a lot of women really, really needed to see reflected, right? For a lot of women, the story of Celie coming out of these many abusive relationships is cathartic. It's an example of a future that could potentially be. And I think that for a lot of queer people, when we sit down, we read these stories and we see source material about us, but then we get to the film and it's not quite as explicit, you can get the impression that you should be hiding 
your queerness. You should be hiding that you're LGBT. That who you are is shameful. That who you are could not be publicly expressed. And that is bias. And that is a type of bigotry that makes a lot of people feel like they don't have a possibility to exist in this world. Even though I'm happy that Alice Walker is happy with the way things ultimately turned out, it is sad to me that they couldn't just take this and actually make it the way that it's discussed in the book. This is, of course, the classic issue with book adaptations, right? But I'm really looking forward to a time where we don't have these conversations in this way, where people can look at a lesbian couple in a film and feel like that's just a reflection of the world that we live in. Because lesbians existed back then. This is not the woke movement, the woke agenda trying to make people from the past queer. People from the past have always been queer. And I think that that's also an interesting aspect of Celie's story. She is a queer woman existing in a time where there's not a lot of space for that. That is another layer of her alienation from the world. And I think that omitting that doesn't allow you to really understand who she is as a character. So it's not surprising to me that somebody like Sei Umba, who wanted to play Celie, could somehow want to play Celie but not understand that she's gay. And that that is a layer of why a lot of the things that are happening to her are so distressing to her. I don't think a lot of people are ready for those conversations, but like I said, if she likes it, I love it. So anyway, what did you guys think about the new adaptation of The Color Purple? Did you like it? I am so curious to hear from people who are fans of the original musical, how you felt about this adaptation. Was it good or not? You know, musical adaptations are very hit and miss. I think we've seen that quite a bit recently. And I do think it's kind of funny that a lot of people went into this film not understanding that it was a musical. I think that's Hollywood, again, not quite wanting to be honest. I love musicals because I'm a thespian, so I did enjoy this movie, even though, like I said, I feel like it's sort of a separate entity. Anyway, let me know what you have to say in the comment box below. If you enjoyed this video, right now I am trying to put together a pilot for a sort of queer retrospective show that is going to also go by the title Movies in My Closet. If you are interested in helping me do that, helping me do something larger than what I've currently been doing, this is now the best time to support my Patreon. My Patreon goes to paying my assistant and my editor, and I would really like to hire a couple more people. So that's kind of what I'm trying to pull resources together for. So if you are interested at all in supporting me to that end, please join my Patreon. And on that note, this has been Movies in My Closet. Until next time.